I'm always genuinely surprised by what can be done inside of a terminal. Today we're looking at an application called uCollage, which is a terminal image viewer. Now, when I say terminal image viewer, I don't mean that it renders all of the images in ASCII or Unicode. What it does is it renders everything with UberZug so you get proper graphical rendering inside of your terminal. And this is basically how it looks. Now, I can't guarantee that it's going to work inside of every single terminal. I know that it works inside of Alacrity, ST, and YourXVT, but if it doesn't support UberZug, then this application will not work at all. It doesn't have a fallback to anything else, so UberZug must be working. The first thing you'll probably notice about this application besides the images is that the key bindings and the way you actually work with it is a little bit weird. So normally you would expect the Vim keys like have a little box that would select this image, then select this and this, so on and so forth. In this case, if we use the Vim keys, it's going to modify the number of rows and columns we see. So if we go and press J, that will reduce the number of rows we're seeing. So now we're down to one. If we press K, that will increase it. If we press L, that's going to increase the number of columns we see. And then if we press H, that will decrease the number of columns. So just keep that in mind that you're not actually moving a box around. And if you want to increase or decrease the number of rows and columns at the same time, you can go and press minus and plus instead. So if we go and press minus, this will take us down to four rows and two columns. This isn't all the images I have. As we can see up here, it's showing images 1 to 8 of 50. So if we want to see the next set, all we do is press N, and that will then scroll down to the next set. And as you might expect, then pressing P is going to go in the other direction. Now you may notice these numbers here next to all of the image names. These numbers are really important for doing a lot of operations in the application. So one of those operations is going into the full screen mode. So if we go and press, let's say the number six, and then we press G, that will then take us into a monocle mode just for that image. And from this monocle mode, there's a couple of basic operations we can do. So if we go and press R, that will then rotate the image, and then capital R will rotate it in the other direction. Now, when you do this to the image, it isn't actually being saved, but it is being saved in a temporary location. So there is actually a way we can go and basically save the modified version. But before we get to that, some of the other things we can do are doing things like renaming an image. So if you press C, it brings up this prompt here. And let's just change this to be just arch.jpg. Now, if I go into my file manager here, let's actually go and find that image. So in my pictures here in the wallpapers folder inside of this one, inside of uh, this one. And as we can see, we have arch.jpg here. And if we go and open this up, as we can see, it's the exact same image we just saw before. Now, when you do modify the size of the application like this, because it is a terminal application, it might not resize properly when you go back to it. Okay, it seems like it's broken a little bit here. So we have the names of the images we'd normally see on the uh, the other screen, but we're still in the monocle mode. So technically the application is still in monocle mode. We can still do monocle mode commands in here. It just might render weirdly sometimes like that, but that's what you'd expect from a terminal application. Now, another thing we can go and do is if we go and press D, that will then go and basically delete the image. Now, when it's deleted, it's not actually being deleted. It's being sent to a trash folder. And unless you've gone and changed it yourself, basically the trash directory is going to be located inside of a folder in .local. And then inside of the share, you have a folder in here called trash. Then inside of the trash folder, there is a uCollage folder. And this is the image that we just deleted. Now, renaming and deleting is fine, but if we go and press the X key, this will actually prompt us to run an arbitrary command. So I can do things like, say, run SXIV, then pass in percent %s. Percent %s, as we can see here, represents the path to the image we're looking at right now. And this will actually run SXIV and open up the image path inside of that. Now, obviously, you wouldn't really want to do it for that. But what you can do is let's say that we rotate the image. Well, what you can do now is press X and then run the move command and move the modified version, which is stored in this right here. So percent %R, or you could write out the full path. Just use percent %R because it's much easier to write. So we could go and do percent %R and then move it to percent %S. And that will then go and replace the original image with the rotated version. But we can run commands from the regular mode as well. We don't just have to be in monocle mode. So if we just go and press X from this screen, it's going to prompt us for a number. So if we go and say press 7, that will then let us run a command on image 7, which in this case is this image right here. So let's once again use SXIV and pass in percent %S. 
And as we can see, it's run that command on it. Now, the other way we can do that is pass in a number first. So let's say we want to do six and then X. This will be the exact same thing, just in a different order. Now that second form may have clued you into something else you can do, so most of the commands in this application work in a Vim-like prefix manner. So what I mean by this is let's say that we press the number 3, and then after that we go and press L. What that's going to do is run the L command three times, which is going to add three more columns. Now some commands actually take in multiple numbers, so one of those is the S command, which is going to let you specify a new grid. So let's say that we pass in three space 4. Now it does have to be a space separated list, you can't use commas or anything like that. So 3 space 4 is going to take us to a 3 by 4 grid, and then we press S, and as we can see, it's a 3 by 4 grid. Now commands like the X command actually take in an arbitrary number of values, so let's say that we want to run 2, 4, 5, and 6 and then we press X. Now what this is going to do is let us actually go and run individual commands on each of those images. Now when I say individual commands, that does mean you have to write out the command for each of the images, but if you don't want to do that and you instead want to just run a single command on every single one of the images, what we can do instead is use the B command, which is the bundle command. So let's say we do 2, 4, 5, and 6, and then we press B, and as we can see, we've changed to a percent capital S now, rather than just a percent lowercase s. And this represents all of these images here. So if you wanted to like, I don't know, open them up in a bulk renamer, or you wanted to open them up in, I don't know, maybe you want to copy them somewhere or something like that. This is one way you can go and do that. Now the way we refer to every image is by using the asterisk. Now if we just use the lowercase b, you might notice that it doesn't refer to every single image in the folder, it's just the images on the screen. So this application makes use of a interesting way to do scoping. So anything that is currently on the screen is referred to as local scope and any of the lowercase commands only work inside of the local scope. So lowercase g, lowercase b, lowercase x, things like that. Now, if you want to refer to the global scope, the way we do that instead is by just using the capital variant of that command. So asterisk and then capital B will run a command on every single image in the folder. From my exploration, it seems like running the local scope commands are going to be fine unless you want to do things like bulk renaming. You generally don't even know the number of an image on the second page, so it doesn't really make any sense to do something like, let's say... I don't know, 15 capital G. It does work, but you have no idea what you're going to open up. Now, one sort of unexpected feature is that if you go and open this up in a folder that has videos in it, it will actually go and make thumbnails for all of those videos. So let's just go and run this. And depending on how many videos you have, it might take a while to load. I do already have all of these thumbnails cached, so it was basically instant for me. On my system, with, what, 81 videos in here, it took like 5 seconds before it had them cached. So it might be considerably slower on a weaker system. But I think this is a kind of neat feature. I probably won't ever get around to actually using it. But nonetheless, I think it's pretty nice to have. Now there's another way we can operate on multiple images, and that's by using the tagging mode. So if we go and press, let's say, 1, 3, 5, uh, 7, and 10, and then we press T, this is going to then tag all of those images. As we can see, this one, this one, and whatever other numbers I said I was going to tag. And if you then want to go and enter your tagging mode, what you do is press semicolon, and all of the regular commands we were doing before work as they did there. So we can do things like, let's say, X, and that will run individual commands on all of the tags. We could do something like press uh, B, and that will then do a bundled command. Really, the only reason to do this is that unlike the previous one where if you passed in the numbers and then ran X or ran B, it would then forget all of the numbers you pressed. This time, it actually remembers them until you go and untag them. And the way that you untag them is by using the U command. Now, generally when you want to untag stuff, you probably want to untag everything. So if we just use asterisk and then U, it will get rid of all of our tags. One thing you saw on the screen earlier but I didn't explain is what happens when you open up a folder that has multiple folders inside of it. So it's going to prompt you to actually expand those folders. And if you don't want to see those images, then just go and press N. Now, Instead of having to do this for every single one of your prompts, let's say that you have images in the folder that you're in and you don't want to expand any of the subfolders. 
all you have to do is go and press capital N. And in this case, I don't have any images to show, but if I did, it would just load up the images in the current folder and none of the subdirectories. I don't think there's much of a reason for me to dig into the configuration because the documentation does a really good job at explaining it. It even explains what an environment variable is and how to set it and where to set it. So I'd recommend having a look through this. There's one thing that's missing that I would really, really, really like to see. And that is that if I go and just run U collage and then pass in a single image, I would like to have it so that it automatically opens up in monocle mode. And if it was like that, I could actually use this as my main image viewer. I could just go and press M as soon as I open up the application, but I really don't want to have to do that. I just want it to be like this by default. And I would also like to be able to disable this bar up here and just have the image being shown. I think that would be a really nice addition to have, and maybe I'll actually use it instead of something like SXIV. So that's going to be everything for me. Thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, then links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to the platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.